Why is New York City a grid system? In order to answer that question, let's go to the very top of the most iconic skyscraper in the entire world, the Empire State Building, and see from a bird's eye perspective how the grid system was formed and the quirks it created. In 1811, there was barely any buildings that were more than two stories tall. Most of New York City was concentrated below Chamber Street. However, nonetheless, in 1811, there was a plan called the Commissioner's Plan. And their intention was to carve out New York City into a grid iron. A grid iron that extended all the way to 155th Street. But why? Well, for that, we have to talk about what New York City was below Chamber Street. It was crowded, cramped, and the streets had no really real plan. It followed many, basically the non-urban planning of medieval cities or a city like Istanbul. It was just a mishmash of streets dating back to the Dutch and their original trails or the Lenape and their original trails that led a little bit further uptown to the village or beyond on what is now Broadway. Well, they decided to formalize a plan. First, they thought to themselves, hey, let's do something similar to the LaFont plan in Washington, D.C. Lots of diagonals, lots of circles in order to spice things up, in order to make it look the, like the grand cities of, of, um, of Europe popping up. Also similar to uh, Philadelphia as well. However, New York City ended up finding out that circles and diagonals weren't really that profitable. They found out that right angles were the best way to sell property. So yep, right angles, best way to sell property. That's why they end up hiring a surveyor by the name of Randall in order to carve out, to survey the land and carve out a gridiron. Now the gridiron is not true north-south. It's actually a little bit tilted because Manhattan is a little bit tilted. Um, but it follows, the grid follows as if Manhattan Island were oriented north-south. There are double wide streets, which we see, we'll see a little bit soon. Actually, we can see one right there, 42nd Street, a double wide street. We'll see 34th Street soon. And of course, there's avenues. However, we have a huge park over there. That was not part of the original commissioner's plan. When they originally made the commissioner's plan, they thought that New Yorkers were gonna hang out right by the waterfront. However, they didn't realize that waterfront property was going to be very, very useful for growing New York City as a commercial hub and also a manufacturing hub and basically a hub for all types of business. Thus, the waterfront became crowded with a whole lot of ports, piers, docks, and slips. And the common New Yorker had no access to it unless if they were working there or taking a ferry. Well, a park was needed many decades later, and by the 1860s, that's why they decided to utilize the part of the grid system that was not yet well developed, buy out the land, claim eminent domain on places like Seneca Village, and make a grand, gigantic park. Ah, speaking of Central Park, one of the most gorgeous parks to visit, there's a tiny little secret in relation to the grid system. 1811, the city officiated the plans for John Randall Jr. to make the grid system. However, John Randall Jr. had to himself mark every single intersection. That was slightly less than a thousand intersections. He would either set up monuments, which were stone slabs, or he would set up bolts. People would attack him, uh, landowners, because they were afraid that their land was going to be cut up into a bunch of pieces and they were gonna lose out on money. So he had vegetables thrown out him, people send out dogs against him. And the thing is, a lot of these bolts disappeared because the entire city has been built. But then in 2004, Professor Reuben Rose Redwood and a New York surveyor by the name of J.R. Morrison sought out to find if any of these bolts existed from John Randall Jr. They scoured the city and to them, the place that made the most sense to find a bolt was here in Central Park. 
But after many, many months of not finding anything, they finally came across one of them. Now I can't tell you the location, but I can show you the bolt. So right here embedded into the Manhattan Chist is one of John Randall Jr.'s bolts that was installed around 1811. So that is one of the bolts and they ask uh, everyone who finds them to keep it a secret. So no one steals the bolt. Now let's go a little bit further down and we'll see a quirk of this grid system. There's a few quirks of this grid system actually. Um, if we go a little bit more to the East Village, we have a few quirks that were remnants of Peter Stevens's farm. The last director general of Dutch New Amsterdam was Peter Stevenson. Instead of being exiled out of the new British territory of New York, he was allowed to have a farm here in modern day East Village. This is Stevenson Street, one of the exceptions in the New York City grid system. It also has a very interesting fact. This street is the only street that runs in a true east-west direction. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the New York City grid system actually runs in the southeast to northwest direction on a 28.9 degree offset. Thus, our grid system is actually not geographically accurate to the directions. This is the only one that's the true east-west. But we have a bigger quirk, which we have to go all the way over here. So for this quirk, we have to look at this street right over here, crossing over here, going up to Manhattan, up and down via diagonal and goes through here. I'll show you a little bit more how it goes. It causes weird triangular plots of land like the Flatiron Building right over there, the triangular building. That was built on a triangular piece of land that was carved up because of Broadway. And also you'll see triangular plots of land that have become squares like Times Square. Now on ground level, we can see why we have these interesting triangular plots every other couple of streets in New York City. It's because right here we have 7th Avenue crossing up, down, north, south, but we have Broadway here crossing through. Right now we are at the Broadway Pedestrian Plaza, which is located in Times Square. And because Broadway collides with 7th Avenue, it creates a triangular plot, which you see here with what is the one Times Square building, now completely covered in ads. That's why we have these so-called squares. They're not really actually squares, they're more like triangles, but that's why we have all these other ones in New York City. So why, why did they put a weird street in the diagonal of Manhattan? Was it to spice things up? No, it was also not part of the original commissioner's plan many decades, a few decades later, they decided to, the city decided to unite the old Broadway, which was much farther downtown, and unite Bloomingdale Road, which were two different Lenape Native American pathways, and decided to connect Manhattan north-south via Broadway. Then they decided to spice things up. So that's the weird quirk we see here. Now there's a, above Chambers Street, above, basically above First Street, Houston, there is a quirk, another quirk, which is this area of Greenwich Village.
Greenwich Village, it was exempted from the grid system. Many decades after that, in the 1900s, Robert Moses wanted to extend 7th Avenue so people can start using their cars to come into work into Manhattan and get out of Manhattan as quick as possible to go back to the suburbs. And thus he carved 7th Avenue through Greenwich Village. But luckily the rest of the Greenwich Village original street planning is still intact. So let's go a little bit further down. We'll see how Broadway continues upwards, northwards. I'll show you more here. So here we get to see how Broadway really crisscrosses and makes these kind of triangular shapes into neighborhoods. Here we have Nomad. So we have Broadway. You see Flatiron right there. Down there. Carving into its own unique neighborhood. This is Fifth Avenue. Now, of course, there's a few buildings that stand in the middle of the grid, like Grand Central Terminal. There's Grace School, which is in the East Village. So here we see Broadway extending, 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 extending. Goes through into Times Square, which is right down there. And here is another double wide street, which is 34th Street. So it's 34th, 42nd, 59th, 57th as well. And then we have 72nd, 96th, 110th, 125th, and 145th. And I think I'm missing 103rd as well. And there's a few others. Let me know in the comments for the other ones. Here we see Hudson Yards. There you get a sense of New York City, how it's constructed. Now, of course, there's a grid system also in Brooklyn. There's one in Queens. There's one on all the five boroughs. Uh, they are different and they're different grid systems because there was uh, developers that developed whole neighborhoods, whole cloth, and, you know, in the course of like five years. So they made their own grid systems and kind of all united together. Not quite the case here in New York's in Manhattan Island because this was a fine example of the city itself imposing the grid system to the detriment of a lot of the owners of the land in Manhattan they were pissed off at the surveyors like Randall uh, coming into their land with his surveying gear and they would throw rocks at him because they did not want him to chop up their property uh, but nonetheless, the grid system persisted, inspired by cities like Philadelphia and paving the way for grid systems like cities of Paris. Yep, Paris became a grid after New York. So a lot of people say that Paris inspired New York in so many ways, but I think New York inspired Paris in many ways. Actually, I forgot one thing, is the amazing lobby. Let's go downstairs. So here, Art Deco escalators, Art Deco walls. Oh my God, so much Art Deco. Wait until you see the Art Deco lobby. Ah, uh, look at this majesty. So in New York City, always, always look up. One of the most beautiful lobbies you'll ever see, in my opinion, here in New York City. Yeah. And I gotta touch an Art Deco wall. Oh my God, touch the Art Deco wall. That feels so good. 
Look at that. One more time. All right. Wow. And here we are out in the front entrance. Oh, wow, that was amazing. I truly never grow tired of the Empire State Building, so I highly recommend visiting it. Uh, it is filled with so much beautiful things to see. You can really take your time. Highly recommend, if you can, come in just like an hour before sunset. Don't pay the extra sunset price because just wait for it. You see New York City in the daytime, transitioning into night. Ooh, gorgeous. Thank you again so much for your support. And finally, one more time, keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day.